Hello and welcome to Stephen University once again in the same room and recorded on the same morning as the last one. So if there's a decline in quality, that's why. We're tired. <laughs> We're just it's tired. It's been a long day. We've recorded some other stuff too. Let's take it late, late, late night. We yeah. Know. We're burning the candle at three ends oh, somehow. And that candle is turning into liquid first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hot wax. Hot wax. <laughs> just a pile of wax. Um, so this one is uh, pile Sadie of Song. Hot wax. <laughs> this week we're discussing Sadie Song. An episode from this particular season that we're watching of Steven University. Oh my two. god, it's already started. I've already begun to lose my mind. I'm gonna do it. Right, so Steven yes. Steven is giving out flyers for Beach Beecher Palooza. Mm-hmm. Um and he goes into the donut shop to give Sadie a flyer. He goes out the back, discovers Sadie is singing. A little song about friendship. <gasps> is it a Sta- song about friendship? Yeah, you're a friend I've got you and you oh, and yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got, I think even, isn't there even a line? You, it's like, the, it's, the song is literally called Haven't You Noticed I'm a Star? And it seems to me just to be about being famous. No, I think there's. Awesome. It's, a, it's, it's a clear yeah. Katy Perry parody, in my opinion. Fair play. I hadn't thought of it like that. Go. Um, so then he's like, you can perform. And Sadie begrudgingly is like, okay, yeah, I'll perform. And then she goes home and it becomes apparent that her mum's a bit nuts. And her mum is quite a pushy mother who forces her into doing things. Um, her and Stephen take over. They give her a dress. They give her makeup. Um, it gets to the day of the event. She's nervous. She's not happy about it. Um, and Mr. Smiley's there. Have we met Mr. Smiley before? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. Smiley's awesome. Um, Usually voiced by the comedian Sinbad, but in this episode, I guess he was unavailable and someone else did the vote. Oh, fair enough. Um, and then uh, he Sadie... did the song for the donut shop. Oh, yeah. And I that. think he runs, he either runs the arcade or the um, the pier, right? One okay. or the other. And I, I remember because Stephen had the watermelon Stevens, and he was like, yeah. "Well, that's a weird thing that you're selling. That's a weird thing you're selling." It says Mr. Smiley. I'm pretty sure. I hate that episode. Carry on. Um, and then you just find them creepy. They, the episode was fine. They, I disagree. Sadie puts her head in the tank of water in rage. Um, and then she's more herself. She yells at her mum, um, tells her mum that she pushes her and all that kind of stuff. It's a big moment. And then Stephen's like, you never wanted to do this. It was always me. And then Stephen appears in the dress in the get up and does his song. And then it cuts back to Stephen and Sadie playing the song more at the end. I'm talking about the ending, if I'm honest, Dan. Are you actually? Yeah, no, I really like the episode. I think it's a great episode. What's wrong with the ending? Slightly talking. Oh, calm down. Fucking oh. hell, you didn't write it. Um, I'm... T- <laughs> I'm just I'm, I want dancers, Chris. I huh? love this episode. Go on, no, 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 no. The Stephen, da- the Stephen dancing bit is great. No, I love that. I and I, what I loved is that was genuinely a surprise because I was expecting her to be D makeup, um, maybe she take way. on the dress and go on and do it her own way. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so, but the Stephen ending. So the Stephen ending genuinely shocked me. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, cool. And I thought it was great. I thought it was um, great imagery, uh, important imagery. You could go as far as to say. Um, to just, you know, deal with the... You know, you're not really dealing with cross-dressing, you know, but it's a dude in a dress in a kid's show. That that probably wouldn't have happened 20 years ago. That's that's cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice to it's nice to re-establish that this, this is fine. This yeah, is whatever. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you do you. Like, yeah, you do you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and yeah. that's it's, awesome. It's nice. It's a um, nice message. So I love all that. I'm talking about the ending because we didn't get a Sadie's mum realising she was wrong moment. We didn't get... Sadie performing the song her way. Um, we didn't really get confirmation, apart from her smiling at the end, that she was happy that Stephen did it instead. Um, and I just, I would have liked maybe a few of those. You bits. just feel like that the the plot didn't feel concluded to you. I just feel like it's literally missing those beats. I uh, wouldn't Ooh. you have liked to have seen Sadie's mum admit she was wrong or whatever, like Connie's mum did last week. I think we got that. Really? I feel like, yeah. I oh. feel like the moment she turns around and literally is just like, I had no idea. Like, I'm sorry. Like, she she sort of says that before before Stephen runs mm. out there. Fair enough. I'd have to pull up the transcript, but um, I'm pretty sure we have that moment. Um, I think you've just lent on the... Oh. On the Xbox remote, Chris. No? No, it's over here. So how is that oh, even possible? Fuck you, Dan. Oh, you? yeah. I'm talking up my back. Sorry. Accusations. Sorry. I know. I'm throwing accusations all over the place today. Oh, something's gone wrong. Must be Chris. Well, I thought we left it on the couch, but it's still making noises, so I'm going to need to turn this off. Where's the... 
I don't know. TV remote. This is, great. This is fucking is. great podcasting. Also untouched. Uh, that's not the one. No. Oh. Also untouched. Okay. Dear Lord Chris. Oh, it's over here. Fine. Also nowhere near me then. Just so we're clear. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right, let's stop the TV from making noises. Which I bet you the mics didn't even pick up, so that whole moment was probably just, just weird. Just a weird moment. Weird where we just started talking about remotes and stuff. Anyhow. Yeah. Right, back to it. Sorry, this is what happens when a better the podcast would have cut that out. <laughs> I think we should all be thankful this isn't a better podcast. <laughs> That's um, not no, what people are coming here for no, at this point. Definitely not. Um, no, I think what for me, like you, you, you get the moment where she clearly regrets, and because because I think the, the the issue here is, or not the issue. I think that what's it's more about her realising because it's the sort of thing that once you realise you're doing it you would naturally feel like a monster but so Sadie giving her it's very it's a little bit like doesn't it doesn't work yeah so she has no idea she's doing this to Sadie she has Mm. no idea that Sadie wants to forge her own path and that she's sort Mm. of been hijacking Sadie's life Mm. Um, and then having her Sadie be honest and express that and her show shock and surprise you would assume change i think a little bit maybe you're right to say that it could have used an extra beat but i think the moment of them sitting down and talking while steven's performing so steve when steven's performing the song they cut to them just sat on the steps and like they're obviously like a really intense sort of conversation and it's clearly them dealing with their issues i didn't even notice that i must have been too like transfixed by steven did you really not no, spot no, no, that no. oh wow so maybe maybe that right. okay fine. maybe that would have given you more of yeah, it yeah. so there's a cutaway while steven's singing and it's them on the steps that lead up to the stage not paying attention at all to the show yeah. but in a very intent looking conversation but also they look quite close and it's quite a tender uh, moment oh and fine I think, then and i think even though there's no dialogue the conversation that's therefore happening is kind of assumed because between that and the moment of realisation, you sort of think that's... The, so for me, that gave me everything I needed. Fair and then also as well, getting to hear Sadie do it her way in a much more stripped back form at the end pays that off even yeah, better to me. Yeah, and I think there's... But I think you have to kind of write it in yourself. But there's because, an explanation of her her and Stephen playing it is she's still one in a way because she's now singing in front of another person. And she's not Yeah, that is privately. still her way. Because so, yeah. you're saying oh, we didn't get to see her do it her way, in my opinion that was her doing it her way. Yeah, okay. Because her way would have been not to do it in front of a crowd. She's clearly not comfortable singing in front of yeah. people. But she'll happily sing with her friends. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And I think that's kind of sweet it's in cute. its own way. Yeah. And it's kind of cute. So um, I, I think we get all those things that, that you fair. sort of criticised uh, for not having. But I can also see that they're maybe not as clear cut. Because mm. do you want to see Sadie get over her anxiety about pouring in front of people and, and blow everyone away, doing it in her manner? That would have been a very satisfying moment. Absolutely, um, we didn't. Def- we certainly didn't get that. We got something different, and you know, I would not tell anyone who wanted the different thing more and yeah. would have preferred that that they're wrong. Yeah. Um, you, you know, that's that's it's just as valid a way to end this episode as what we got. Um, personally, I, I very much enjoyed what we got because it's a bit different. I think. Mm-hmm. I think. A, I think. A, a, if a sh- if the show had done this, I'd have been a bit like, well, that was quite. Predict, not predictable. Yeah, predictable. It, that yeah, been, that, yeah, yeah. To me, that would be more predictable. You, you, the, the shock of Stephen going onto that stage when you first see this episode is quite. You, it's the last thing you're expecting to right. see. I almost expect. I I would have expected um, Barb to be up there before Stephen. To be yeah, honest yeah, with yeah. you, you it, know, is, um, it, it is a real surprise, and it's great for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I I love the decision to make the crowd be so into it. And yes. not have the crowd be like, "What's he doing?" Like for the crowd to just be like, "Yeah, well, like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, clearly, love that. he's clearly he's nailing it. <laughs> clearly yeah. he is nailing it." Um, so. And I, yeah, so I'm a, I, I really like that, and I think what's great about this episode as well, and it's interesting that this one sort of comes straight after Nightmare Hospital, which has got such a similar. I mean, the the the, the mum message. It's yeah. it's different but similar all at once. So because basically the, the 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 plot there was obviously that Connie's mum was too controlling. Um, and the plot here is that Sadie was sort of taking over, but it, they're, they're different angles on a similar theme, mm. which is the parent trying to dictate the kid's life in some way, shape or form. Different reasons, different approaches, uh, different solutions to both those problems. Um, but it both came down to them having to be honest with their parents. And the message is, you know, you know, talk about it, 
talk to your parents, acknowledge any issues you have. Let's, you know, don't suffer in silence. And I think that you, you know, you, they're, they're human beings too, and they'll talk to you and you'll hopefully work it out like sensible, sensible people. Um, and I think that's a really important message. Mm, I think a lot yeah. of kids do suffer with whatever their, the weight of the world is that's on their shoulders in silence. They don't feel necessarily like they can talk to their parents. And I think it's very relatable. And I think it's a very powerful message. And uh, it's interesting that they've come one after the other. Don't know if that's, I, I, I doubt that's intentional at this point. I'm pretty sure the episode, the episode no, do you think they should have changed the order? Just to spread them out a little bit? Mm. Maybe. But then maybe you think, oh, they're a nice little pairing. Two sides of the same coin. Yeah. You could true. argue you could argue the opposite thought being equally valid. So I mean maybe personally me, I'd have been tempted to put them a little bit further apart so it didn't feel like we were doing the same story or such a similar story two 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 times on the trot, but two very different versions of that story. I mean one yeah. of them is essentially a horror and one of them is essentially like a goofy sort of comedy. Yeah, very much so. And I think you also there's quite a lot of Oh, it is a mum. Cool that like, called it, by the way. Um yeah. and there's I, a lot just, of fan just satisfaction that, from that. Yeah. 100% when she shows up and Chris uh, when Chris when Steven says um, oh I knew you delivered mail but I didn't know you delivered Sadie so that's funny. such a great line such a good gag such a great gag and uh, but obviously you were obviously right when you kept saying that but what yeah, was but I again, supposed to do in that situation a, that's not a big I think in that one you could have been like yeah it's her mum yeah but it's clearly it's a reveal so in this episode I know but it's so clearly a reveal in this episode that I guarantee you people in the comments would have been like damn like, why are you spoiling probably it? yeah so I, I'm trying my best, Chris. So it's clearly hard. a mum, though. Obviously. I mean, extra clear now, they've had a whole episode dedicated to the fact that she's yeah, a mum. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, I would say it's even more obvious now than, than previously. I um I like that Stephen doesn't want to break up a family, because that's how I feel about teddy bears. That, well, that's true. You you share that thought with teddy Big bears, teddy don't bear. you? You've got, you've got, you've got, you've got bear bears that you've had from when you were very young that you've not teddy separated, Tom. that you want separate. Teddy, teddy Tom. And his brother, Teddy Jerry. Uh, who's in much better shape? Much better shape. Yeah. <laughs> if I, I wonder if I've still got those two pictures of Teddy Tom and Terry Teddy Possibly, Jerry. Yeah. I will. If I can dig them out, there are pictures I've taken of Chris's bear and his sister's bear, and they were bought in the same moment, in the same time, in the same. We, like, we were page boy and page girl at a wedding. Okay. We were given them. And Chris's looks like it's been through a thousand years worth of turmoil. And the other one is in pristine condition. Uh, I mean, mine's mine's Yours more, is more loved. loved. Yeah, I think it's say that. is the thing there. Um, <laughs> Jess, put... Jess has an equally disgusting teddy bear. Does she? Mm. Well, there you go. You're perfect for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. what makes me laugh that that reminds me of Stephen when he talks about his cheeseburger backpack. He goes, "This is my cheeseburger backpack. It's a little scuffed, but that's just because I love it so much." Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. You and Stephen have more in common than you thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, I've got a gem in my belly button. So. Do you? Yeah. Oh, you never. Yeah. Get yeah. that doctor, quite all the these years. Said it was an infection. So. I just thought it was an infection. And antibiotics went away. <laughs> it's a grim joke. It's a terrible <laughs> joke. It's also true. I did have a belly button thing. But anyway. This <laughs> appeared on my first ever weekend away with Jess. Awkward. Um, <laughs> I mean, again, a better podcast would cut that. <laughs> Me chatting about my belly button. I mean, the thing is, you guys can't see me right now, but let me tell you, I've taken my glasses <laughs> off and I've buried my face in my hands. <laughs> Back to the episode. I, um, I'm going to be bold here and potentially controversial. Do it. I don't think the song's as catchy as previous numbers. Are you kidding? You don't like it? I couldn't hum it to you now. Oh, come on, man. <sighs> I couldn't hum it for you now. Wow. Anyway, I'm not sure which ones I could hum now, but... Apart from the Garnet one, which I love. That's a great song. Have you listened to it since? Yeah, yeah. I bet you have. I bet you yeah, found yeah, it on I YouTube. It. I haven't, it I haven't like, put it on my Apple Music or anything, but I have listened to it. Uh, you found, found the clip, the clip on, YouTube. on YouTube. Yeah. And just yeah. Had, a little, had a little groove. Have you, yeah. seen the, you've, have you seen the video then that they did from Comic Con this year? Of her performing it live? Yeah. I have seen that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, you are in. Moment. You are yeah, in yeah, deep. Yeah. I have seen that. God, you are a big moment. Oh, this is weird now. You're a fan. Like I've been subtly teasing for months now that you're getting a pearl tattoo on the on the in the comments. <laughs> you, know, you know you're committed. I've committed you to a tattoo. I'm of gonna pearl. get it over my belly button. <laughs> yeah, you get. Have her have her her forehead gem be your belly button. <laughs> and as I get fatter, pearl will look pregnant. <laughs> as the tattoo stretches. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do another one of these after this. <laughs> I think we should. I'm the I'm the other way. I we think will call we call this def- the deliriously tired trilogy of episodes. Yeah. 
<laughs> so look out for, for that. Yeah. Um, what other notes you got on the app? Um, so yeah, there's a few interesting things. Well, first of all, Beach Palooza last happened in Stephen and the Stevens. So that's cool for two reasons. I did wonder why Stephen and... Well, obviously he's not got multiple Stevens, but I did wonder why he didn't get the gems together to form a band for the event. I guess just do different stuff each year, maybe. Mm, maybe. Or maybe this year, because he was part of organising it, he, he didn't, be, or didn't participate as a, in an act, maybe because he was helping Mr Smiley out in a backstage capacity, and a flyer-handing out capacity that maybe. he didn't think to perform until he did. Yeah. Um, what's cool about this is, though, it st- also tracks with Connie's words at the Nightmare Hospital about it being nearly a year. Because oh, cool. Because, again, Beach Blues, uh, the episode previous, the Stephen and the Stevens yeah. one, had actually roughly been... Yeah. Um, in September the year before That's again. That's cool. So roughly a year still from the previous Beach Blues. And what's really interesting is the last time we were in the same room together talking about an episode mm. face it to face, Chris, was Stephen, Stephen and, and the Stevens. Stevens. Oh, yeah. So there's a weird little connection there. What were we thought. doing then? Uh, we were doing it was static, yeah. nothing but static. Hundred, uh, hundred and twenty odd episode of the, the, the sixth year anniversary static thing. Um. So yeah. Uh. So that's pretty good. Obviously, Sadie Scar still present. From our adventure, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's other stuff. I've got to double check. Bob is still wearing the knee brace from Love Letters. Um, she still refers to Stephen as Greg's boy. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought that was sweet. She obviously knows Greg. Cute, yeah. uh, maybe they were to school together or something. I don't know. It's a bit bit weird. Um Oh, yeah, so at the end of Keep Beach City Weird, the Ronaldo episode, he talked about his theory was sentient about sentient rock people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously in this episode, he's still going on. What? How old is Sadie meant to be? I've wondered that, and I don't, I don't know. I could probably it's the try assumption and that out. she's at the donut shop as a part-time job and all these adventures take place around school, or is the assumption that she's 18, 19? That's a really good question. Because she does make a lot of references. Stephen appears a lot younger for them to have been in school together. Well, no, we know Stephen's never been to school. Oh, you think? Oh, maybe Greg and Sadie's mum went to school. Oh, together. yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah sorry. but Greg didn't. Greg doesn't originate from the town. And then how does she know? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Speculating. No, you're right. He doesn't originate. Uh, she's uh, she's at least eighteen or over. Right. Okay. So she is a lot older. Which makes sense. Which makes sense. Um, also, the the song. So the song. There's you hear a few versions of the same song in this episode. Um, the first, obviously, being Sadie singing it at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Then in the middle, you hear the version that presumably she's covering because mm-hmm. it's a voice that you you know you'll be familiar with. But to Adventure Time fans, um, that's actually a very very familiar voice. Uh, Marceline, who's a major character in Adventure Time and a character created by Rebecca Sugar, who created this show. Um, Olivia Olsen, who's her voice actress, um, performs that oh, song cool. on here, and she has got an absolutely stunning voice. Cool. She sings in Adventure Time as well. Also, songs written by Rebecca Sugar. Yeah, yeah. Um, and legitimately, like when they when they, when I first heard this song with uh, Olivia Olsen's voice in it, that really that yeah it blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. So, Marceline's my favorite character from Adventure Time by absolute miles. So her voice is so distinct to me now and I really picked it up very quickly. So yeah, it's really cool. That's a nice little nod. Um because uh, what well, another little nod actually. This is more of an Adventure Time trivia than a Steven Universe trivia, but because Rebecca Sugar basically created the Marceline character in Adventure Time when they finally revealed Marceline's mother, they made Rebecca Sugar voice her. Oh, I say that's made cute. asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so cuz she was literally yeah. the mother of the character in that sense. That's like how um the woman who voices Spider-Man's like suit is the wife of Paul Bettany, who voices Iron Man's suit. Yes, I think that's quite cool. And back in the day, Madam Web was voiced in the cartoon by Stanley's wife, who sadly has now passed. Yeah, so, which is very fairly sad. recently. Mm, yeah. Quite sad. Um, let's have a look. You, you got, uh, just I, I don't know if we've given a. Well, I suppose we have. We talked about the ending. We talked about the. It's very funny. I don't think we've outright said that. We should say that. It's a very, it's a, very it is funny a, episode. Yeah. The but dancing, particularly the, the montage. So we haven't talked yeah. about the montage, actually. We've sort yeah, of skipped yeah. over that when we were we summing it up. There's a montage in the middle where they're getting Sadie ready for the show where Stephen and um, Barb are like really pushing for dance routine and an outfit and stuff yeah. like that. And then there's this really like 
tragic reveal of what her face looks like. Yeah. And, and she's all like made made up too much, yeah. clearly too much, and looks like a bit of a mess, really. Looks like David Bowie and Cher had a kid. Yeah. yeah. And then that kid had another kid that fell into toxic waste. I don't think she looks that bad. Well, her <laughs> face all sort of like they they warp it intentionally. Yeah, you yeah. know, it sort of like sort of sags because yeah. she's sad, but it creates this really like this impression of just like it's, it, it, you know, it, it it looks not so yeah. on her and yes. wrong. And I think yeah. that's the the, the that's intent. The big thing, They're making yeah. it look bad on purpose because the idea is that it's it, it's not her. Yeah. It's not Sadie. It doesn't yeah, suit yeah. her. It doesn't match her. It just doesn't work with her personality. It's it's literally the opposite of what she should be doing. Yeah. And I think that's really powerful. And I think that works really well. Because the moment she turns around, you visibly you reacted. You went, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oof, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's really well done. Um, and of course, then there's just my favourite joke, which is just that we run out of glitter. Got to go get the backup glitter. Yeah, <laughs> in the car. Why is the backup glitter? And what she comes back with is a bucket twice the size of yeah. the initial <laughs> glitter. That is some backup glitter. That's more than backup glitter. Um, yeah. Um, also, did you notice that one of the drawings that Ronaldo had of the rock people had a, had the shape of Peridot? Yes, I did see that. I thought that was a neat That's little, pretty cool. just accidental. Nailing it, stay a little, yeah, yeah, stumble on, yeah, yeah, because he's just drawn a rock, obviously. But, um, notice that Lars was hanging out with the cool kids, yep, spot that one. Thought that was an interesting thing to to do. Well, that helps, I think, the idea that Sadie was going to come on as herself because it built in, oh, we're going to see Lars's reaction. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, the apparently the star makeup applied to her is apparently a reference to the character Gem from Gem and the Holograms, which I never watched, but that's a, yeah. that's a thing. Yeah. Didn't realise. Um, apparently as well, and this is just another little Adventure Time nod, um, apparently one of Sadie's stuffed animal looks like the penguin character Gunther from uh, Adventure Time, um, which will mean nothing to Chris. but uh, Literally nothing. But for those who, are, who watch Adventure Time 2, you're going, Gunther! We're all yelling Gunther. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't want to. I'm not going to overrun for the sake of it, just because we've, we've. No, I we've think I think we're out of steam, yeah. Chris. Yeah, no, I think. So yeah, that's... we will come back. I, I suppose um, for the delusional trilogy to, to complete the delusional trilogy. The delusional? It's not delu- isn't delusional. Isn't the word? Is it? It's delusional tired. The tiredness is making us delusional. The tiredness tri- trilogy. The tired trilogy. Mm. As we've Would... got steadier, steadily more tired. We stayed up late, guys. We stayed up like stayed up late to watch watch Steven Universe and give you some podcast and stuff. Are we regretting the decision? No, I'm happy. No, no, no. no I think happy. these are turning out okay. We're tired, so we're slower than usual. But I think we're still giving the people the same great content, yeah. Chris. <laughs> I, I think we're giving the people the same content we usually provide. <laughs> Wow. I'm not going to be as bold as to say great. That does not speak well of our usual level of content. <laughs> anyway, that is everything for this week. I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham. And we'll speak to you on, I guess, Tuesday. I'm thinking if I've worked this out correctly. As we speak to you about... Wow, I've really fucked this up now. I got so... You know what? I was so pleased that I got Tuesday you, right. You had a lot of energy uh, and it just went yeah. to shit. Okay, look, so we'll pretend yeah. that didn't happen, Chris. Yeah. I'm not going to cut it out because it's fucking okay. work. Yeah. But we're going to pretend. Yeah. Who's got the top? Yeah, exactly. So, I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham. And we'll speak to you on Tuesday as we discuss Catch and Release. Boom! Nailed it. <laughs>